My name is Catherine Gross and this is a case study for the first millennium conference of the Ecological Society of America. My presentation is concerned with perceptions of need and injustice in water distribution in Australia. The area of my research is natural resource management and it is concerned with the allocation and sharing of scarce natural resources. In particular it explores what can be done when there seems to be no foreseeable solution. The case study is located in the Murray-Darling Basin which is a large catchment or watershed in the southeast of Australia. It is Australia's most important agricultural area. This region has been in the grip of a long-standing and widespread drought for several years. The drought is particularly serious in the southeast including many areas in the state of Victoria, the location of this case study. The case study centres on a deal to fund significant upgrades to irrigation infrastructure to save water lost in transmission. In return, the saved water will be shared with the city of Melbourne via a new 75 kilometre pipeline. This photograph shows part of the pipeline during construction prior to it being laid in the ground. This slide shows the irrigation areas in the north of the state of Victoria and the route of the north-south pipeline taking water from the Goulburn River to the Sugarloaf Reservoir just north of the city of Melbourne. The Victorian government is providing $1 billion to upgrade the irrigation infrastructure and in return the saved water will be shared three ways with one-third going to the city of Melbourne via the north-south pipeline one-third being returned to the environment as environmental flows and one-third being given to irrigators for use in agricultural production. This case study explores community perceptions from a justice perspective. It is not concerned with the pros and cons of the deal itself. There were different reactions from groups within the communities affected by the pipeline and the transfer of water out of the Murray-Darling Basin. Some were opposed to the deal and organised a grassroots movement called Plug the Pipe. Several protests were held to voice opposition. The Premier of Victoria, Premier Brumby, who is the equivalent of an American state governor, is depicted in the Plug the Pipe campaign poster. But not everyone was opposed to the deal. Some people expressed a neutral position but wanted more information including details about the water savings. However, there was widespread dissatisfaction with what was perceived to be a general lack of involvement of the communities affected by the deal. People voiced their opposition in a variety of ways, including these signs displayed in public places. One road sign implies that the Premier of Victoria is stealing the water. A sign at the site of the pumping station draws attention to negative impacts not only on the river downstream but on future generations. The actual diameter of the pipeline is shown in the roadside replica to emphasize that this is a large pipeline taking a large volume of water from the river system in drought. Artists also voice their opinion through their artwork. Michelle Arter's two works refer to the infamous 19th century Australian bushranger or outlaw Ned Kelly who wore a metal helmet in the shootout that resulted in his capture. Here, the bushranger is from the city and the robbery is about water. Christine Arnott's work, In Providence, depicts, in her words, that the Victorian government lacks foresight and is wasteful and incautious. These three works comment on the perceived inequality between town and country in relation to the pipeline and transfer of water. This research investigates the case study through three justice constructs. Distributive justice is concerned with outcomes. There are three key principles by which benefits are distributed. These are need, whereby benefits are distributed according to an individual's need. Equity, whereby benefits are distributed as a proportion in relation to merit or input. And equality, in which benefits are distributed equally. Procedural justice is concerned with decision-making processes and includes participation, the ability to express voice, the availability of information 
under consideration of people's issues. Interactional justice is concerned with interpersonal treatment whereby stakeholders are recognised as having an interest in the process and outcome and are treated with respect. A first key finding was that there were widespread perceptions of injustice and that these occurred in all three areas of justice. The redistribution of water was opposed because Melbourne's need for extra water had not been justified adequately and it was thought that Melbourne had other options such as recycling stormwater and installing rainwater tanks. People thought that water would be taken, in their view unfairly, from the environment and from irrigators. People were also sceptical about whether the proposed water savings could be achieved. In terms of process, people felt they had not been consulted, they had not been given the information they needed to assess the impacts of the pipeline and their concerns had not been addressed. People felt that they should have been recognised as stakeholders who had valid concerns. Instead, they felt they had been treated with disdain and without respect. An important finding from this research is that these perceptions of injustice resulted in harm from a material perspective or a social perspective or a personal perspective. From these findings it can be seen that people formulate their notions of justice around their perceptions of harm and injustice rather than from an ideal state of justice. This provides support for a theory of injustice in which injustice is explored as a separate construct from justice. This case study has shown that people developed a sense of injustice as the decision-making process unfolded. I now turn to the question, why is justice important? Theories of justice have been debated for centuries and many definitions of what justice is about and reasons for its importance have been given. In this case study I have chosen the writing of Edmund Kahn to illustrate the importance of justice. Professor Kahn wrote in 1949 that justice means the active process of remedying or preventing what would arouse the sense of injustice. Thus, justice is a process as well as an outcome. It is a means as well as an end. This is why justice is important. It is an active process to prevent an injustice from taking place and associated perceptions of injustice arising. There are three key implications for decision makers which I now summarise. What can be done to resolve seemingly intractable resource allocation problems? First, this research has shown that matters of justice and injustice are fundamental to people's acceptance or rejection of a decision. Therefore, it is clear that a broader approach is required in which the different circumstances of people are taken into account. Second, we can recognise that justice is multifaceted and that justice can be seen as a means as well as an end. Justice constructs can be seen as justice tools to be used in decision-making processes to increase the acceptance of decisions and improve outcomes. Third, decision-makers must consider the justice implications of both processes and outcomes. Procedural justice and interactional justice are vital in situations where difficult decisions are required and where outcomes are likely to be perceived as disadvantageous to some. Justice must be done and must be seen to be done to resolve these types of resource allocation problems. The conclusion of this research is that these types of resource allocation problems can be made more tractable through the use of justice tools and considerations. Finally, I would like to acknowledge and thank those who have contributed to this research and who have given permission for their work to be used.